We're trying to go for peace. We're trying to go for coexistence, but we need to I'm get sorry, rid David, of I'm sorry, David, I've got to cut, of, of cut you off there. Because, um, I mean, sure. I'm, I'm trying, just trying to get answers to questions, and if you can't answer the question, Good then I can't be allow me. you to do the propaganda bit afterwards. I can't allow you to do the propaganda bit afterwards. I can't allow you to do the propaganda bit afterwards. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to My Left Eye. News host Christian Guru Murthy left Israel spokesperson David Menser red-faced in an interview on Channel 4 this week. The interview came after shocking news that seven members of the World Central Kitchen have been killed in an attack by the IDF. And what makes the matter even worse is that the transport of aid had been pre-arranged with the Israeli government and the vehicles in the convoy were clearly marked. Menser also found himself unable to stand up to scrutiny in an LBC interview and Channel 4 have said that an artificial intelligence weapon system may be the reason for the seven deaths. Following international condemnation for this latest atrocity, Israel will now have to answer for their actions. President Biden has met with Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu and here in the UK there's increasing pressure on Prime Minister Rishi Sunak to stop the sale of weapons systems to Israel, including from within his own party. More on that shortly, but first a reminder of why Krishnan had run out of patience with Mercer's propaganda. Let's see what's happening. Can I ask you as a matter of fact, did Israel bomb the Iranian consulate in Syria? So I've got no comment on that, but what I can share okay, with fine. you is that uh, Daniel Hagari uh, said quite clearly that it wasn't a civilian embassy, it was um, a military base for Al-Quds. So while I can't okay, confirm but you're not going or to admit uh, no, as I said, that was a military base for the Al-Quds force. Iran, unfortunately, once again, trying to destabilize this region, not for the good of the Palestinian people, not for the good of the, the Arab world at yeah. large, but okay. just to destabilize this region. We're trying to go for peace. We're trying to go for coexistence, but we need to I'm get I'm sorry, David, I've got to cut, of, of cut you off there. Because um, I mean, sure. I'm, I'm trying, just trying to get answers to questions. And if you can't answer the question, good then I can't be, allow me. you to do the propaganda bit afterwards. But David Menzer, thank you very much indeed. <laughs> That was the tail end of the interview after Mensa had repeatedly tried to play off the incident as an accident, despite evidence to the contrary. He also repeated several debunked pieces of Israeli propaganda concerning the overall conflict. For those of you who aren't familiar with David, he's unsurprisingly a member of Labour Friends of Israel, and he takes over his spokes from Elon Levy, who it's believed was suspended after a disagreement with UK Foreign Secretary and former Prime Minister David Hammett, uh, Cameron. So... First, Israel said the attack was a Hamas roadside IED. That was quickly called out as poppycock because pictures clearly showed that a missile had hit the tops of the WCK vehicles, which were also kilometres away from one another. Then they said it was an accident and they weren't targeted, and now they're trying to jump through hoops trying to explain why they were targeted. It's desperate stuff from David, and we saw the same thing in an LBC interview earlier too. I want to know exactly uh, what happened. There were the we information the on the ground. What happened. The information on the ground suggests that three of vehicles were deliberately directly targeted in a, what the Prime Minister Netanyahu describes in an unintentional fashion, although the pictures would, would disagree with him on that. These convoys, this convoy was in a deconfliction zone, having given information to the IDF about where it was going. What other aid organisation could now trust that the information it gives to the IDF to protect them will actually be listened to? So I say again, Tim, uh, Tim, uh, Tom, rather, uh, clearly something terrible uh, has happened. Uh, we are investigating it. Uh, as I said before, pressing already. If it was intentional, when we go, you didn't after intend. Hamas, one might think that you didn't intend to yeah. target a charity, but clearly the targeting of the convoy that they they were in was intentional. It's not an accident that the missile hit the roof of this vehicle, is it? Look, something catastrophic has gone wrong here. Um, and the IDF are uh, investigating. Uh, our intelligence. That partnership is being tested, Mr. Mensah, isn't the, it? It is. With, it is being with tested. incidents like but this. Unfortunately, well, unfortunately, Tom, uh, there is a terrible war going on. It's not a war that we started. It's not a war that we wanted. But we must finish this evil of Hamas to allow for a better future for the people of Gaza and, of course, for my people uh, here in Israel as well. So we're trying to free. We're trying to free Gaza from. Hamas, the genocidal, murderous mm -hmm. organization. But we need to ensure that as much aid as we can possibly get through to Gazan civilians actually gets through without Hamas looting the aid.
I, uh, I think I can smell shite. When I said at the beginning of the video that Mensa was left red faced, that wasn't figuratively put. In fact, as you can see here from another appearance on Talk TV, he looked like he'd just returned from a holiday on Mercury as he continued to rant on in an elaborate and hammed up performance while the host and guest James Schneider struggled to get a word in edgeways. Yes, evil Hamas, James. You support them. No, I, I don't. Anyway, I'll just I let him run out of steam right. and then and then maybe we can return me, to some, some sanity because what we're talking about right here, behind me, you know. not behind you and your tin pot ideas. All right, David, on that point, thank you, David Mensah, uh, for joining us. Uh, very animated stuff. James is staying with us. David's career as spokes not exactly getting off to a flyer then. As I mentioned earlier, there's pressure on UK Prime Minister Rishi Sunak to stop arms sales to Israel and this has led to a rift in the party. Let's see what's happening there. So I'm not going to read through the whole article, just uh, pick out a few final points. Tory infighting grows as peer calls for end to Israel arms sales. This is from The Guardian. Nicholas Soames, the veteran Tory peer, said the UK should send a message about Israel's actions, the latest in a series of Conservative figures to call for an end to UK arms sales. As Downing Street and David Cameron, the Foreign Secretary, remained largely silent, a furious row broke out over Israel's actions, with the former minister Alan Duncan lambasting what he called pro-Israel extremists within the Tories, prompting the party to investigate his comments. Keir Starmer also faces pressure to back an end to arms sales after Sadiq Khan, the London mayor, and Margaret Beckett, the former Labour MP who was Foreign Secretary under Tory Blur. It actually says that in the article I've just noticed. Sorry, that wasn't a mistake in me reading that out. That It actually says Tory Blur. <laughs> How fitting. Uh, called on the government to consider an immediate action. I've only just noticed that. That's incredible. Uh, Tory Blur. Soames, a former minister who spent 36 years in the Commons uh, before being made a peer, said that in the wake of the deaths of the seven aid workers for World Central Kitchen, amongst them three Britons, the UK needed to stop providing Israel with arms. Soames joins his fellow Conservative peer Hugo Swire and three Tory MPs David Jones, Paul Bristow and Flick Drummond in calling for arms sales to be suspended. A fourth Tory MP, Mark Logan, called on Thursday for the UK arms exports to Israel to be reviewed. We need to seriously reassess any weapons, materials slash arms exports to Israel in the light of what happened, he said in a post on Twitter. Suella Braverman's tried to come back with some utter hogwash, but that's really not worth going through at all. Separately, the former head of MI6 said that Israel's actions in Gaza had, quote, bordered on the reckless, end quote. Alex Junger, who led the secret intelligence service between 2014 and 2020, said it was, quote, hard not to conclude that insufficient care is being paid to the collateral risks of these operations one way or another, end quote. Downing Street has given no indication that it plans to halt sales or of when any legal opinion might be released. Since I started to make this video as well, it's uh, come out in the news that Israel military has sacked senior officers involved in aid worker convoy strike. The IDF has said that it sacked two senior officers from the unit involved in the incident from duties, according to a report from the BBC. We'll do our best to keep you up to speed with the situation on my left eye, so don't forget to hit the notification bell so that you don't miss out. In conclusion, I think that this is a horrific attack and I really hope that those responsible are brought to justice immediately. That also includes the man at the top of the chain, Benjamin Netanyahu, who's not only facing increased international pressure after this incident, but also pressure from within his own country as people call for his resignation. Let us know what you think in the comments. Thanks so much for watching. Please hit the subscribe and thumbs up buttons to help us out on the algorithm. We've also now got the membership program open with some great perks for you to enjoy starting from just 99p. Hit the join button or follow the links in the channel description. If you'd like to make a one-off contribution then please hit super thanks on the video or follow the link to our buy me a coffee page where you can help to show solidarity and support the channel for just the price of a tasty hot beverage. All contributions are greatly appreciated. Thanks again everyone. My left eye will be seeing you soon.